Hi, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of our podcast. Today, I have a special guest and CEO of Duncan Financial Group, Brian Duncan. And we are going to get into what we do here at Duncan, who we are, just to get us started off on this podcast. We're really excited to see where it goes, and we're happy to have you guys here. So thank you for joining us. So Brian, first question, what do we do here at Duncan? What do we do? Well, thanks for having me, first of all. <laughs> It's great to be here on our inaugural podcast. Yes. We are really the family office for the everyday insurance buyer and investor. What I mean by that is if you're an individual or family, we can help you with your insurance program, your tax and accounting services, your investments, and all of your health insurance and Medicare needs. Mm -hmm. And if you're a business owner or leader, we can do all those things in the business settings, your corporate retirement plan, your workers' comp and liability insurance your group medical benefits and your tax and accounting services for your business as well. And we coordinate that with a team of professionals to simplify your life and hopefully over time drive better outcomes for you. Yeah. So Brian, how long have you been here at Duncan? Since 2009. So this wow. is my 15th year. That's when I graduated year. high school. How about that? <laughs> I graduated before that. Uh, I would hope so. <laughs> So um, I've only been here for about a year, just coming up mm -hmm. on a year. And uh, obviously, this has been our family business since, mm -hmm. since we were kids. You know, grandpa yeah. started it and, and dad ran it. And so I think that I didn't even understand how much we did here, you know, mm -hmm. despite it being our family business and knowing. I, once I actually started here, I was like, we literally do all of the things, you know. That's it. So it's, it's pretty cool to see that. And it's, it's awesome how we make it all work together. That's our tagline. Mm -hmm. um, but it is true that we really do make it all work together and, and, and we make it as easy as possible for our clients. Mm -hmm. And we've basically built it over the past, uh, you know, 40 40. Five, mm -hmm. 45, 45 years, Indeed. we continue to add things basically mm -hmm. to, to make the, our lives, like the, our clients' lives easier, you know? Definitely. Um, what do you do day to day here at Duncan? Yeah. So in addition to just general leadership responsibilities, I work with uh, clients to help them really with their wealth management and financial planning needs. And I like to be a quarterback for clients to help them coordinate everything from retirement to investments to taxes and estate and insurance planning, if I can help them solve those needs, meet them where they need to be met, just generally on every business leader's uh, lifestyle, life cycle, if you will, they'll need help with one of those things. Um, mm -hmm. So we can hopefully plug in and be assistance to them yeah. as well. So I'll, I'll do that with individuals, with families, business leaders. And then I also work with some of our financial professionals that we do business with outside the firm as, as well to help yeah, them there. Yeah, yeah, you do a lot. It, indeed, <laughs> it's, it keeps me pretty busy. Yeah, yeah, and then them four kids. <laughs> then I have yes. four kids, yes. Yeah, yeah, so tell us a little bit about yourself outside of Duncan. Yeah, very blessed. I've got a wonderful wife, Rachel, and mm -hmm. four children, uh, mm -hmm. twin boys, Miles and Teddy, a daughter, Marlo, who's uh, five, and then our son, Jack, who is two, yeah. and he is Dennis the Menace reincarnated. So <laughs> yes. we... We're thankful to have them. Uh, but yeah, they really bring a lot of meaning to what we do, what I do, um, just how we look at things, how we look at the world, um, what we're focused on to make things better for people and for our families. It definitely drives a, a lot of that motivation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's take it back all the way to the beginning. So you started in 2009, but mm -hmm. this company really started with our grandfather. Mm -hmm. uh, so why don't you start it out? What, what, how did we start basically? Yeah. In 1978, uh, perhaps I call him, you know, yeah. John M. Duncan or Jack, as many knew him, uh, bought out his partner of the Hutchins agency and really then began focusing on selling insurance. And then shortly thereafter, our dad, Dave, joined the company in the late 1970s. And then Uncle John as, as well as we got into the early 80s. And you know what they were able to build was just tremendous because back then um, it wasn't as clear as it is now how good of a business you know, and the impact you can have on people's lives is uh -huh. what insurance and financial services would be. And with uh, Paps and, and John Jump, as we know him, yeah. uh, handling the insurance side, dad following on the financial services side, it really created, again, this family office concept that we can help anybody mm -hmm. with all of their needs, really, except real estate and banking. We were able to be a counselor there for clients over time as their needs evolved. And over the last four decades, four and a half decades, I guess, officially, mm -hmm. I think, you know, dad tells a great story about over time, clients come to us with the things that they're having difficulty with or looking for a service provider. And, you know, dad just kind of had that mindset of, well, why can't we help them with it? You know, yeah. by the time we learn it and help figure out someone else's problem, 
yeah. um, that you need help with, um, we might as well just do it. So right. we've been very lucky to find some people along the way that bought into that mentality of the client at the center and everything else around them on uh, just yet yeah, being able to offer all of those services, but not, not we, we really have been careful not to do anything part-time. Um, mm -hmm. Whatever we deliver here, it's delivered by a professional and that's their focus and they bring expertise. You know, the way we as a leadership team look at it is if we're going to offer something, that offering and the service and all of the resources and the people in that offering need to be able to stand on their own. They'd have to be able to stand as their own business. It's not just that they're here under these four walls so we can do things with more simplicity or not be at the level of our competition in each of those offerings. We need to be you know, there and setting the bar higher. Yeah, you know. and I think it's so cool because it's like, before I think dad and jump even knew that they were doing it, that, that they were kind of doing that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool whenever you build a business and, and it's almost as if you all, not that you don't do it on accident, but you mm -hmm. don't even really realize what an impact it will have down the road. Indeed. And like you said, you know, everybody, we, the people that we have in the, those seats, they know what they're doing. They're yeah. experts. So it's like dad didn't know how to do something. So he brought on somebody mm -hmm. who did, you know, jump couldn't do something. So he brought in somebody who could. Yep. So those are people that are very educated in their field and know exactly what they're doing. They're the best of the best. And it just makes us, I think, that's what makes us so special. Absolutely. Two things there. One is our independence was a big mm -hmm. help and driver of being able to offer all those services. You know, as you look across insurance and financial services, you know, there's a lot of big name firms that I understand a lot of people may have comfort in that mm -hmm. they see their firm on a commercial or there's a nice logo. Um, but at the end of the day, those firms generally are uh, beholden to shareholders and other demands and dynamics, whereas being independent, you can really evaluate solutions for your clients and you get to control the journey, not maybe what might be mandated from above, if you will. So I think that's helped us mm -hmm. create that custom model. And then the right people, right seats concept is a good one where yeah. we've tried to help people find what are you passionate about? What do you love to do? And things that don't fall in that category so let's find someone else to help with yeah. those. And that's that's driven a lot of success. Absolutely. So educate me because mm -hmm. I know that in terms of the insurance industry, mm -hmm. that's what really sets us apart is that we're shopping the best deals from multiple carriers, whereas mm -hmm. some are, like you said, beholden to what they're they're told to do, they're mm -hmm. mandated to do. We are able to shop a bunch of different deals for mm -hmm. our clients. And that's insurance on the personal side and the business side. Does that also come to the to fruition in financials where because we're independent, we're able to, to do more for the, our clients? It does. It really is helpful there too. So there's life insurance. We put mm -hmm. life insurance under the financial services umbrella yeah. because that's really planning for liquidity events, business continuation, and other financial needs of a survivor or surviving family or partner. Mm -hmm. So we look at that as financial services. We represent over 30 companies there in that universe. And we actually are a brokerage. So we're part of the nation's largest independent marketing organization uh, for life insurance, which gives us some immediate scale there. Mm -hmm. And then similar to all of the investment products and solutions that are available, we can get our clients into the Vanguard index funds at a low cost, or if they have other more complex needs, we can pursue those as well, just yeah. based on what we see as a fit for the client. You learn something new every day. There you go. How about that? <laughs> so Can't wait for it. next month. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to learn so much. <laughs> Slowly learning as I go. That's but it, that, I mean, it really is something that's very impressive and, you know, something that in my marketing world that I try to explain to, that's what I want to show clients and prospective clients is that we are different in that way. It's not mm -hmm. the same as like, you know, your corner store that is mm -hmm. a big national brand name that mm -hmm. can only sell you what they're allowed to sell you basically. That, that's it. Um, so, so yeah, so very interesting. Um, now back to PAP. So PAP mm -hmm. started this and, and like you said, it's really cool. Um, dad came in with a mm -hmm. totally different uh, perspective and doing financials mm -hmm. rather than the insurance. John mm -hmm. came on, helped him with that. And what's interesting is that Paps passed away in 96 very suddenly mm -hmm. for all of us. Um, and dad and jump then kind of had to just like move forward and, 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 mm -hmm. and take control. So I have a couple of questions, I guess, off of this is that um, one, obviously they learned a ton by doing that because they mm -hmm. just kind of were thrown into it. Um, something that John has said is that like he wasn't really into the commercial side of it. You know, Paps was more so the commercial and he was uh, personal. So he had to learn all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then you know, dad and him had to kind of just like figure out where to go from there. Yeah. Um, so I guess my first question is, what did that teach you? 
Mm -hmm. um, and then also, do you kind of see, like, this is almost something that we try to help people with, mm -hmm. you know, so that if, you know, the CEO or, or, you know, it's a family company and if somebody does pass away suddenly, like we want to be able to be there to help them. It's, so it's kind of cool how that taught us that. So absolutely. So go ahead. <laughs> Definitely. Well, first uh, necessity is the mother of invention where when someone has that happen, probably business owners and others that are, have dealt with those situations are probably listening in. They know you just have to do what you have to do and figure it out. Thankfully, you know, dad and John had a great network of mentors and people around them to help navigate that situation and the difficulty that it was. And what we try to do now, what that's helped us actually do for other customers is help them with that planning ahead of time, ahead of that unforeseen event. Uh, make sure that they have the right buy sell agreement, the right estate plan, the right life insurance, if that's applicable to them, so that everyone who's a part of that company that depends on it, family, employees, are can still sustain and, and prosper, even if that breadwinner or key person or other involvement in the company is not able to, to be there. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's something where thankfully the planning that Paps and Dad and John had in place really helped make sure that our grandmother and others that depended on the company could still continue as difficult as it was emotionally and all the difficulty that yet you go through in a sudden passing like that, they were able to financially be okay. And I think that brought a lot of peace of mind and has helped us, you know, over the next 20, 30 years to really be able to deliver for people still. Yeah, yeah. And it, Carry yeah. on the legacy. Yeah, and it's mm -hmm. th that is just so vital to mm -hmm. the the fact that they had that in place. You know, like you said, it it, it of course it's traumatic. Of course, mm -hmm. it's you know awful to lose someone, but mm -hmm. to not have to then on top of that worry about you know how are we going to get through this? How are we going to pay for this? How are we going to you know mm -hmm. you know those things? And and I, we help people with that obviously, which is awesome. But yeah. you know like if you don't have that life insurance or that business, like if you don't have that plan in place, like. I mean, it can, it can be a real mess for the people that you're leaving behind. And obviously nobody Absolutely. plans on dying mm -hmm. um, suddenly or unexpectedly or early. Um, so having those in place is just, it's just absolutely vital for, for it businesses. Is. It really is. And some business owners and leaders and others have relationships with those advisors to be able to get those documents and agreements and plans buttoned up. Mm -hmm. What we find is though, the studies show less than 50% of all US businesses actually have a, a functional buy-sell agreement and plan in place. And that's where we come in a lot of times. We have a team of folks that helps businesses with that planning. Mm -hmm. But also if you work with our organization, you may be asked that question from another one of our professionals. They may see you have a son or daughter in the business and ask you, do you have that in place? And then we can help because a lot of times, if you're not already working with an estate attorney or a tax professional that brings that up to you, those plans just may go years and years without ever being put in place. So right. we take it upon ourselves to make sure that's something that's on the list of yeah. action items to work it's on. It's important to us because a, a, a business owner, I mean, with the stress that you have every day of just running the business and making sure it's continuing to run, you don't think yeah. about those things. Um, that's it. We always call it the bus test. We pass the bus test. Uh, if you got hit by a bus tomorrow, would your business <laughs> survive it? You know, because it happens. We can use <laughs> marketing brochures for that one. <laughs> bus the bus test. test. Yeah, yeah. Bam. So if if you have you know kids or you have people in the business that you care about that you want the business to continue running for, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you, you, it passes that bus test. Absolutely. And I think that it's something that a lot of business owners just don't have the time or the mm -hmm. thought. You know, they're they've got well, as a business owner, you've got a million thoughts going through your head. Definitely. And those types of things just you don't have the time to to put that you know focus into. And that's mm -hmm. what we help people to do. That's so it. when you sit down with them and you ask them those questions. Sometimes they really ha are like, yeah, oh gosh, yeah, never thought about that, or what, what should I do? You know, right. and that is, it's, it's really, really important. Absolutely, I, I totally agree, and that's a place where being independent, having that independence, and the ability for us to really drive the business model, mm -hmm. really helps us be that quarterback. A lot of other firms out there don't even offer that service, or aren't aren't at all uh, enthusiastic about offering that service, and. That's where, again, you know, with so many things in our universe of insurance and financial services being somewhat commoditized as much as we don't want to admit that, it's just mm -hmm. the reality of it, that additional consulting that you can do to help people put a plan in place and then make sure it's followed and make sure it's documented. Um, that's a lot of times why people hire and work with us. Absolutely. Yeah, we stand on the shoulders of giants for sure yeah. uh, when it comes to 
paps and then just having that vision dad to really take it to something more comprehensive because when you look across the atmosphere and the landscape not many organizations do all the things that we do because there's a lot that comes along with that a lot of integration a lot of stress a lot of making sure everybody's happy and when you find people that really embrace that mentality and are, are you know look at it the same way you do you can really build a strong team which is what i think we've done um, as as part of that you really have to have the commitment to offering all those things and it, you know i think it's i'm not sure when the the concept became hot of you know hire great people and get out of the way i know that's kind of a very yeah. popular theme yeah. you know that really you know that, yeah, that started in the, in the 80s, 80s. Yeah. yeah i mean that's really it just help, hiring yeah. some of people that are still here today mm -hmm. uh 20 30 years later that just great yeah. people that built something out that put their thumbprint on it absolutely um, and made it better and you know we're all that much more fortunate because of it yeah and i'm so excited like this is why i kind of wanted to start the podcast so that mm -hmm. people we you can meet those people and you can yes. you know we mm -hmm. have leaders in their field who who just know so much and can educate people whether you're aspiring to be in that type of role or mm -hmm. you're just you're you just need that help maybe you need yeah. you know commercial insurance and you, you need to learn more about it or maybe you want to be a commercial insurance agent yep. and you want to learn about it that's exactly why i wanted to start this so that we you can get that expertise from those people mm -hmm. um because I, you just i just want to highlight that i think it's incredible that like like you said that's a popular thing now but you know dad and john were truly like living that out in the 80s and 90s yeah. and finding those people and putting those people <laughs> in the right seats and saying i don't know what i'm doing so here you yeah. do it you know yes and while it is very chaotic and there's yeah. a lot of moving parts now yes back then you know the, the jungle was not as cleared out you know they really mm -hmm. had to go figure it out they had to pave a way and, and figure out a way for all these things to connect and yeah. They always knew if we just put the client in the center of it, great things will, will happen if yep. we deliver on yep. that. Yep, and it, I just don't think that there's anything truer than that. You know, Pap said that mm -hmm. you know, put the client first and everything else kind of falls into place. And, yep. you know, no matter what the organization is doing, as long as you're putting that first, you know, great mm -hmm. things will, will come. And, and it's that service mindset of mm -hmm. we'll do it for our clients, whatever they need. And it's not, you know, to, to reap some big reward from it. It's just that that's just the right thing to do, period. It is. And I think that's the mentality that we bring. And the word service gets brought up a lot, whether it's in advertisements or marketing mm -hmm. or collateral. Mm -hmm. It's a very highly used term. Yeah. Very subjective. <laughs> and, you know, I think part of what we want to do in this podcast, or at least what I'm going to do in the first <laughs> one, I may not be episode. invited back. <laughs> Is, we'll see if you get canceled. Yeah, pull that. If the state <laughs> chances are looking good, pull that curtain back a little bit and realize that in, in our industries, insurance and financial services, retention rates are at 90% plus. You yeah. know, so we all know as consumers that there are just some things we really don't like to deal with. We don't want to move. And so what ends up happening is, you know, we might have a lower expectation or more pain has to occur for us to really consider changing our insurance or financial or tax relationship um, and service may just not be enough to do it because it may not be clear how good or not good the service is and then it probably really isn't clear what's on the other side is it actually worth the change and so yeah. because of that high retention you know 90 percent of people stay what ends up happening is i think sometimes the bar just kind of lowers and lowers every year mm -hmm. because People know that people are going to stay as long as you don't really do a poor job, you're probably going to hang on. And I think that's what we try to do differently is we take it very seriously. We have growth goals. So number one, we have to retain all of our clients to grow. So we have we're very serious about that service. And really, it's finding people um, that just care and yeah. that are going to take it ownership of finding a solution. You know, There's a number of stories you know, that we'll share, I think, in these podcasts mm -hmm. over time of what we did for a client when some may have just said hey that's as far as i can take this for you this is it yeah we've really tried to go above and beyond and take it on ourselves to say what how can i help this client that independence helps doing that again we don't work for a broader manufacturer you know if you are with a large insurance company with a direct agent and you have a claim situation you know it's difficult are they going to be your advocate the same way right. that an independent agent would that's just right. one example um, and so taking that very seriously um, and what we then do to kind of double down on that that's the uniqueness of all the things that we do all that we offer mm -hmm. we'll work with you we'll start with you in any of those areas one medicare policy maybe a homeowners for a, a vacation home that you have or just starting an ira account with us when you have your other investments elsewhere we would just say try us out give give us a chance to run your business yeah because then you can actually see measurably is this service mm -hmm. better than what i've had in the past or what i get elsewhere 
Um, and and is it worth leaving? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Is it worth leaving? And what we find is when we sit down with people, especially as they transition or think about that transition to retirement, I think retirement's kind of an interesting word. I think it's just a new phase for a lot of people. Yeah. The next phase of their life, it may not be working, you know, 40 hours a week, it, but it might involve some work or it yeah. may involve some travel. Whatever that next phase is, they will sit down with us and inevitably they are looking to typically consolidate and simplify. Yeah. And that's really where, again, where we try to be there for them is give them guidance and advice on the areas they need, mm -hmm. but then have a professional here that can help them implement you know, what they need to um, just having to deal with less people, fewer firms, mm -hmm. and knowing that behind the scenes, your what's important to you, your picture, your financial and insurance life is being coordinated. Yeah. Um, I think that goes a long way for, for people. So service is at the core. Mm -hmm. And if you don't deliver that, then we feel like for us, then you know that becomes pretty obvious and we can't be the organization we want to be if we don't deliver. On Absolutely. That. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So speaking of service, um, in the, another really important thing to uh, PAPS was community mm -hmm. and then also just the culture here at Duncan. <clears throat> Definitely. Um, community, was, it's something that I, I love that I hear a bunch about him and after starting at Duncan was mm -hmm. just like how, how, what a, you know, he was just really in the community. He was not just like for, for the face of it, not just to take pictures. Like he right. was involved, like he was, you know, that's fixing it. things up and he was, you know, donating his money and his time. Um, and that's just something that's been important to us here. So if you want to speak on a little bit more about our Definitely. community and what we do here. Yeah, that's really been a big legacy of PAPS and that's really been carried along for the generations and just being, seeing that here with so many people that they all have their passion for some of that community and but whatever it is whether it's the car crews music in the streets or just the making sure the chambers got the resources they need yeah. um, as part us being a member of that and being available and just again being a partner in the community what you find is that you know it's it's anyone can write the check so to speak you know yeah. that that's something that's a little easier to do but finding people that will volunteer their time and actually get into it we have the community here in Irwin we've been very blessed by for 45 years, uh -huh. but we also now through partnerships and acquisitions, we're in 10 other communities just, yeah. just like Irwin that have had a great impact on the partner firm that we have there and also you know, vice versa. We wanna make sure we're having a great impact on those communities. So it's just making sure we can do everything that's possible. Uh -huh. And what you find is again, you know, I think in 2024, it's chaotic. People have a lot of commitments. There's a lot of things going on. Just finding those areas that we can be a resource in, that we can actually make a difference, that we can volunteer our time. And at the end of it, whether it's through a church organization, a community organization, it was so important, you know, to PAPS. And we want to make sure through that we're making an impact again, not just with a financial contribution, but kind of showing from a family perspective, you know, this is, this is a way to give back and to help. Yeah. And studies show, you know, the more involved you are, you know, the greater li the likelihood of that community is to thrive and, mm -hmm. and be on the right path. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, second half of that is the culture here at Duncan. So, yeah. so the community was obviously very important to him. Yes. Um, and, you know, we have the John M. Duncan Award here mm -hmm. at Duncan, and, and that is one of the key pieces to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also just have culture and making sure that, you know, our employees are taken care of just the way that our clients are. We want our employees. That That's also very important to us. Definitely. The culture was so important to and it's been important to us because that again is a great differentiator. You can't have that service and that people going above and beyond if they're not happy in their role or happy with the organization. Mm -hmm. So like anything in life, there are ups and downs, there are difficulties. You know, I think through our family environment, we're able to help make sure people have that flexibility and that grace when they deal with things in their, maybe their personal life or just business life that they need some time, they need some flexibility to deal with. Because we have a, a robust team, we can be there for them um, and be a part of that. But then, you know, also as part of our culture, we want to make sure we're clear on core values. So being mm -hmm. a team player, kind and respectful, uh, being solutions oriented, aspiring to be an expert in your role are just some of the core values that we have. And so if we can attract the right people through those core values and mm -hmm. repel people that don't prioritize those core values the way that we do, we found that's also a, a pathway to success. Yeah.
And I would say that probably has to be one of the most difficult things about your role, um, which is different than PAPS, because when PAPS was here, and even when dad and John got started, you know, you're talking about like less than 10 people in the office. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot easier to control the culture and to make sure that everyone's on the same page. Whereas now we have, yeah. like you said, we have many locations and we have 140 plus employees. It's a little That's bit right. more difficult. But what I think that we do well is offering that flexibility mm -hmm. um, and, and, and giving those core values and, and trying to make sure that everyone stays on track with those. You know, some people are going to be stronger and some areas than others yeah um and it's 2024 and in the past four years the the, the entire um just every industry has mm -hmm. completely changed just working right. has changed yes um since covid it has completely changed the way that um, I think there was a huge shift in the way mm -hmm. that employees viewed work and the way that um, people, do, the expectations, I think, of the workplace. So yeah. I, I, that has to be, I do not envy you. <laughs> that has to be a very difficult thing to have taken on because you became the CEO two years ago. Correct. Yeah. Is that right? About yes. two years ago? Pr president in 2020, 2019. So okay. December of 2019. So it was a okay. great time. Great time to just take that to over, take it over and then to take over the CEO. That's it. A few years later. But, but I've got great team, great mentorship, thankfully. Yeah. And, and it really was a, a team effort to get us through the last four years, especially. Mm -hmm. I think one way you could look at that uh, a flexibility in the approach that we take is just how we handle the pandemic. You know, mm -hmm. we, we certainly weren't perfect, but I would say we were flexible. We met people where they needed to be met, where they were comfortable working, whether it was home, office, hybrid. And to, to this day, we still, we, still are, we still are doing that. And we still, yeah. you know, whereas a lot of firms in, in Pittsburgh or other places have had to say, hey, it's come back or it's this many days in the office, period. No ifs, ands, or buts. You know, that's, that's really not our world. We've tried to mm -hmm. be flexible and adaptable to help people do great work for clients, you know, balance their work and life needs as they need to. Um, and then in, in the meantime, just build something scalable where people are still learning from each other. There's still collaboration. There's still a culture. You know, we're always trying to figure that out. But I, I think we've made a lot of good strides on that. And there's a lot of great things to come. Yeah. So going back to um, PAPS, what PAPS kind of taught us, Dad, John, I think is that hard work. Mm -hmm. um, two things to that is just obviously the hard work and then getting through hard times. Mm -hmm. Like you said, obviously 2020 through 2024 has been incredibly difficult unprecedented times as they say as they say <laughs> so it's so i guess let's touch on the hard work first mm -hmm. um and kind of what, what they have passed down to us yeah hard work is a it's a great concept i think that people have just gravitated uh to here and helping people so they say that when you do what you love it's not really work mm -hmm. And I, I do think when you look around our organization, you find that, you know, yes, people obviously have to, we're all making sacrifices. We got to think about things and juggle our work-life balance. But when you really boil it down, we're all doing things that we enjoy doing and that we get fulfillment and satisfaction mm -hmm. out of. And it's our job as leaders and it's our, our job is how we run the company to make sure we're putting people in those positions. So maybe it's starting in one area of the organization and ultimately working in another where you find more of your niche and where you can really make an impact on people. Mm -hmm. And so as part of that, the hard work also comes from, I'll say, delayed gratification. Um, newsflash, as we look behind the curtain again, this is a delayed gratification industry. So if you're thinking about joining us or joining it, um, it does take some time to build, but it's incredibly rewarding. Although in the beginning, you will need to deal with the uncertainty and the rejection or yeah. Just not seeing the results of your efforts maybe right away, again, depending on what area of the company you might work within, but that you have to be committed to going after what you're going to pursue and just in doing it repeatedly and consistently. And if you do those things, great things happen. If you don't do those things, good things don't tend to come in, mm -hmm. in, to fruition. So it's one of those areas where we use hard work as Yes, it's delayed gratification, and you have to get your mind around that. Some generations are really good with delayed gratification. <laughs> and Amazon Others, Prime generation, Amazon Prime generation. <laughs> we all love our Prime. I guess they yeah. extended that to three or four days, so I guess yeah. some of those generations yeah. now We're are dealing to with wait a, little bit, yeah. a little bit of extended gratification. Yeah. God bless. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. You hopefully can, they make it through. <laughs> hopefully you can work through that. Thoughts and prayers. But really, it, that hasn't changed in our world, and I don't think it will anytime soon. Mm -hmm. And then as part of that, another dimension of hard work is just meeting the clients where they need to be met. That's yeah. an overly used cliche. I totally understand that. So, Brian, what does that look like? It's where meeting somebody after hours on Saturdays or they're having a transaction, they're having a home closing, a business deal, 
and we are second to last on the list to get the call yeah. to make it happen. Yeah. And we just have to find a way to jump through the hoops and get it done very quickly. Mm -hmm. And it just, that's, that's hard work. And if you love what you do and you can then attach it to the difference you're going to make for that person, that family, that business, yeah. you can see that outcome for them because of what you did to mm -hmm. help them along that, create that plan, check the box, whatever it was then you're not really, and it's not really working. But yes, yeah, some will say that's difficult or stressful or a lot of urgency or deadlines. Uh -huh. They come and they go, uh, but the desire to help clients wherever they are in their journey, wherever they are, we're going to be there to, to yeah. make sure that happens. Yeah. And I think there's, two, you know, a couple of sides to that, whereas like that hard work is, you know, doing for the client what's best for them, whether or not you see that as, you know, That's being right. really beneficial to you. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen, you know, in our, you know, especially in, you know, um, people that have been around a lot longer in this industry and in, in our company that they, you know, just kind of help somebody out as a favor or they do something, you know, that they're not really expecting to see anything in return. It's mm -hmm. not some big commission or anything like that. They're just doing it because, you know, they care about the client. And then, you know, maybe five, 10, 15, 20 plus years down the road, they see, they actually come back to them tenfold because, you know, they did something for a client, you know, out of the goodness of their heart and the client, you know, really respected that loyalty. And then, you know, they come That's into it. a ton of money or their business really grows and they've just kept you as That's their it. insurance agent because you've always been loyal to them. So absolutely, it, that's a really awesome thing. Um, and then also it's that hard work of, you know, going the extra mile for our clients. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we have many stories of our, mm -hmm. our um, employees going, you know, and doing that extra thing to get our, mm -hmm. our, our, our customers what they deserve. So mm -hmm. what you touched on earlier when you have a, an agency that's not independent, that mm -hmm. can only do so much in a claim Right. you know, experience, uh, whereas ours, we're going to go that extra mile. We're going to call that, you know, we're going to call that carrier and say, Hey, listen here, I, see. <laughs> you know, I read the fine print. So you're going to uh, do what we say, yep. uh, but you know, the going that extra mile go, and making those extra calls and just doing the most that we can for our clients. Um, mm -hmm. I think that, that is not, it's, it's hard work. Um, mm -hmm. it's also kind of expected and yes. it's not about, yeah. you know, working 80 hours. It's about doing what's right for our clients and what's best for, for the it. company. In so. 2024, that just has evolved a lot. It's evolved mm -hmm. in the last four years that just, what is that expectation and how can we help people? Cause I think all the things that you said, sum it up to an advocate, you know, yeah. clients need an advocate mm -hmm. for all the things, the services that we offer in it by putting your mindset of how can I get the best outcome for this individual based on their goals, their expectations, their plans, yeah. then you can really do a lot of great work. And yeah, like you said, it, there will be times where that path is longer or it's more yeah. jagged or it, it's got a lot more hoops yeah. to jump through. Yeah. But like you said, bringing that mentality without any expectation in return, that client's then more likely to bring additional business to us or yeah, refer, refer a friend to mm -hmm. us. Absolutely. And yep. That's what's worked. I mean, that's how we have 140 plus team members is just doing that really well. So again, behind the curtain for anybody who's wondering, how do they do that? What is yeah. the secret sauce? Yeah. I mean, we're, we've covered it here. I, you know, I wish there were more to it. Yeah. Find great people that love to take care of clients, that love to take care of each other, that support all of those things that we offer. Make sure we're matching up what clients need from us and we're delivering on that. We actually have a real tangible service that yeah. it's not just, again, as something we do part time or hope that you like and find value in. It's something that we're serious about uh, and do that really well over a long period of time. Don't ask for anything in return. Yeah. Great things happen. Yeah. And I think that just goes right back to Paps and his, you know, mm -hmm. his philosophy was put the client first and good things will happen. That's and it. that's at the center, I think, of everything we do, whether you're an employee, whether, you know, regardless of where you are, if you're putting that client first, that, that's, that's, that's all that matters here. You that's know? well said. And a lot of the topics that we have talked about are topics of discussion for yeah. other organizations and other, yeah. what, what, what have you of other areas of the industry that people may get exposed to, commercials, seminars, whatever it is. And I think when you look across the landscape of other organizations in our business, you can see just how hard it is to build something like we've built here, to start it from nothing like Paps did, to then have a vision like Dad did for wrapping yourself around a family and a business in a way that nobody else can because it's hard and yeah. it can be stressful and it takes the right people doing the right things and having that mentality of, you know, I need to sacrifice now for a reward later. And that, doing that in concert, it gets pretty complicated at Absolutely. times. But if you are committed to that mission and committed to that path, 
you can kind of see, you know, what we've been able to do with 140 strong. And I think the great things that we'll be able to do in the future. Yeah, absolutely. All right. You got any questions for me? I do, by the way. Thanks for being a guest. We do, we absolutely. Ha thanks for having me. My <laughs> agent regarding the speakers. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, the question I wanted to ask you, since joining the organization, mm -hmm. what has kind of been the most fascinating or interesting to you? Maybe the outside looking in, you thought or saw one thing and now being here, yeah. you've experienced something different. Yeah. So like I said at the beginning, um, definitely I had no idea what all we did here. Mm -hmm. You know, growing up, you know, I came into this office. One thing that's funny to me that I tell everyone, because, you know, this building is like not easy to get around. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that everyone just assumed that I knew where I was going. <laughs> So my first day, I was kind of just like walking around in circles mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm a Duncan. So it's right. like you would think that I would know where I was going, um, but yeah. I had only ever gone in the back door up to dad's office. So I had never, you know, walked around. Um, there are three and, floors and, yeah. that and a is, front door. Yeah. And that is kind of uh, explains how I felt about the entire organization where I walked in thinking I knew what mm -hmm. we offered and then realized we actually, it was a lot bigger and a lot mm -hmm. more complicated, um, which is awesome. And I mean, I, I'm a client, so. Thanks for your business. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> um, so I have experienced it myself. Uh, and I knew that we offered a lot of these things, but I didn't really realize the depth of how much we offered and, and the breadth. So, yeah. um, so that's been really awesome to see and learn about. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm still I've uh, less than a year in, but I mean, holy smokes, I've learned a lot, and I'm still sure. I'm still learning about it because we have so many uh, different pieces of the puzzle, basically. Definitely. Um, and then the other part would definitely just be how cool it is to work with my my family. Yeah. I got my brother, my older brother, my little brother, cousin, aunt, uncle, dad. You yep. know, so it's really awesome. Um, and you know, Mike canceled for saying that but i do feel like <laughs> like we are a family i know in 2024 you're not supposed to say your work is like your family but right. literally it's my family mm -hmm. um and i also feel like that kind of is you know i feel like other employees also feel that way we have people mm -hmm. that have been here a really long time mm -hmm. um that to me i literally saw when i yes. come into the office as a little kid Absolutely, you know bringing dad's yeah. lunch and you know maybe their kids or other family exactly members. Yeah. so kind of grew up with them um and so that so it's really awesome to see that and it, it feels like we care about each other and, yeah. and, and I don't want to say it feels like we do care about each other mm -hmm. and you can feel that when you're working it's not just about what you're producing you know yep. we care about you we care about your family we you, you know we want to make sure that you're good I, I remember we were in uh you were in a sales meeting and you said you know take care of each other mm -hmm. and I don't know how many you know CEOs are sitting there saying <laughs> take care of each other you know right. because we Look all out. go through things in life and and I mm -hmm. think that that's really special here is that we support people mm -hmm. um and and we offer a lot of flexibility for when people go through you yeah. know like those life events do happen thank yeah. you and yeah yeah i think just to, again to kind of cancel to continue that cancellation <laughs> potential because it is and i've read you know some interesting takes on the other side of that that hey they're your work colleagues are not your family they're not your friends separate mm -hmm. those things and i you know everybody has to find where water fills to its level for them but i think yeah. you hit on it well at a minimum here you'll know that as part of those peaks and valleys in life and especially those valleys Mm -hmm. You'll be met with grace and flexibility and a team that cares about helping you go through whatever it is that you need to. Because we will all have them. We'll all meet yeah. them as much as we don't want to think about it and as much as we don't even want to remember when we've had to go through it. Mm -hmm. um, if nothing else, and I think our culture is much more special and has a lot of dimensions to it with that family atmosphere, even if you are a skeptic of that, understandably so, at a minimum, you're going to know that, hey, if when I run into some difficulty... Uh -huh. they're going to be there because they've been doing that for 45 years. And that's yeah. just, that's just who they are. And again, what makes them a little different. Yeah, absolutely. We'll understand. Yep. That's it. Well, thank you for being my first guest. You're welcome. <laughs> and Do I get a prize? Yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> you're my brother. <laughs> So thank you guys so much for tuning in. We're really excited about this podcast. Like I said earlier, I really am excited to bring you guys lots of different people, lots of different employees that work here, different leadership, um, and just to, to be able to educate, but also to be able to just share what, what's going on here at Duncan and, 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 and hopefully help you inspire, uh, educate all of the things. So thank you for tuning in to our first episode and we will see you next week. We will drop every Monday at 8 a.m. wherever you find your podcasts. Thank you. Woo! Hashtag DFG for Hashtag life.